Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video I would like to talk about um, 13 essential things that I think filmmakers should have uh, whether if you are professional filmmakers, beginners, amateur, semi-professional, what have you um, I think that these are 13 essential things that all filmmakers should have uh, so first is lighting. Lighting is a bit like lenses and color grading, color correction in your into your image. So it does help to tell the story. The lighting does not only help to set up um, the lights on your character or um, whoever it is or whichever subject it is you're filming, but um, depending on the type of lighting you apply to it, it will give you the different feeling, the different mood um, of the whole setup or the location that you're filming and it will also help to give a different feeling and may actually tell a different story to the audience that is watching your footage. So lighting is also just as important I think as having a nice lens on there or a nice location that also helps to tell the story if you're filming short film or whatever you're filming. And obviously depending on which stage you're at, you know, um, if you're a beginner, you might have a different, totally different lighting set. Lighting set is something like, I wouldn't say that you should overlook. You should definitely invest in some sort of lighting. If you're a beginner, I'm not suggesting that you should spend 7,000 euros on, you know, professional lighting. Though if you have that much money, why not? Um, but uh, invest in some sort of decent lighting, whether it's LED panels or um, just simple filming lighting or you can even go to one of those construction um, shops where they sell a lot of construction lighting um, a lot of filmmakers well budget filmmakers also use this trick is that um, in construction shop I don't know uh, the word for it in English but they tend to have like really nice construction lighting and it is really strong and it's usually really really cheap and um, it actually serves similar purpose anyway, like you can get the same job done. It may not be as versatile as um, filming lights because a lot of filming lights nowadays does equip with um, some sort of power in it, so you don't need to always plug it into the wall, whereas the cheaper lighting from the construction shops uh, tend to always need the power in. And uh, that being said, when you do look for the uh, lighting, also look at the hertz. if if it's gonna cause flicker in your fit footage, yeah. My second on the list is fluid head um, for filming. Either you already have a video tripod or you still have that photography tri like photo tripod, but you can also just add a fluid head on it. So um, I have the Zahla Ace video tripod, but a lot of times if I'm going out somewhere with friends, I also just like to take my um, normal photography tripod. I have a Manfrotto B3 tripod. It's a really nice small tripod and I usually take my fluid head with me. Um, Manfrotto just released their B3 video version of um, their B3 uh, photo tripod. It's a bit confusing um, but I don't find it to be as smooth as I want it to be. That's why I don't have it yet. But yeah, you, like you can always customize different video tripods or different tripods in general to fit your needs but um, a fluid head will definitely help you to get that um, smooth panning effect so if you just get a tripod like one of those ones that you just get from the shop really cheap when you try to pan with it it's not as smooth so really do good research or go to the shop and look for the right head to fit on it um, as long as it's fitting your budget and uh, actually nowadays a lot of um, no-name, well, no-name brand kind of um, Chinese companies also makes a lot of good fluid head that also fit into a lot of um, low-budget filmmakers list. So yeah, always have a fluid head. My third thing on the list is actually computer. So it's really, really good to have good enough computer to actually like allows you to edit your video on it properly. So if you are like one of those people who film a lot of 4K videos or even good full HD videos, um, then you'll need a certain level of computer, um, such as starting with like 16 gigabyte of RAM or 
at least eight because if you're starting like at four or six it's it's already like <laughs> not really enough but that being said uh it's also about the processor and the type of drive you have in there as well and your obviously your graphics card and a lot of things just just look at the type of video you're filming your file and what you actually do in post-processing how far you want to go with treating your footage and uh, yeah and then just actually look at the computer that you have if it's good enough or not because you don't want to be editing a video and then it takes like you know ages to process and then it also skip frames and certain audio just doesn't read properly so yeah you don't want to be that guy who gets like frustrated not even halfway through editing the whole project number four on my list is cards so like or any media that you use so um if, whether if you're using sd cards cf cards uh, that's what i use cf cards um or xqds or cfast cards or what have you um make sure to always get uh, the proper cards for your camera like if your camera takes SD, I'm not saying that you only have to look at SD, but also look at which class it is, the read and write speed, and look at the file size. So pretty much just like read the specifications from your camera. What, like how fast is writing to the card, which card it is actually recommended, because you don't want your card to fail on you when you're filming or after you film and you figure it out that, you know, the buffer is still pretty full but you already shut it down and took the battery out and then you pretty much kind of either have the file corrupted or you pretty much lost the file already. Um, yes, some cameras does have the uh, security feature that, you know, if anything happens to the camera, it will try to write the stuff onto the card before um, anything else goes wrong. So, but a lot of cameras also doesn't have that and even though some cameras do have the safety feature, it still isn't that secure. And yes, even um, really high branded uh, cards like Extreme, well, Sandy's Extreme or um, Lexa Professional, I use those as well, but they still have chance, like really high chance of failing. And if a card fails, then you know, it, it fails. It's really hard to recover what you had on there. And um, so really look for the right uh, speed, the right type of card. So um, that you yeah, have like really like you reduce the chance of the card failing on you when you're actually doing your project. Number five on my list is actually filters. So filters is actually really important, especially if you're filming outside. And I'm talking mainly about neutral density, neutral density filter, or short for like ND filters. Um, a lot of people like to use the variable ND filters. So um, it's like a sunglass for your lens pretty much so if you're filming outside and if you would like to use that shallow depth of field as well as um, that 50th of a second um, shutter speed or lower shutter speed especially on a like bright daylight um, so just just to prevent your image from being overexposed you use like an ND filter in front of the lens so just to you know, make the whole scene a bit darker so that you can use the right aperture, like that shallow of the field that you want and that low shutter speed that you want to match with your video frames per second. Number six, of course, cameras. Um, cameras is actually the thing that you record the video, so it's always good to look for a proper camera. And um, it, like nowadays, I don't think it's important anymore to look if this, if GSLR is better than mirrorless or mirrorless is better than compact. It's more about what you need because nowadays even compact cameras can deliver like really similar video quality as some of the bigger cameras does. So really look through what kind of filming you want to do, if that makes sense. So um, if you want to be more versatile or if you're more documentary type of person or if you're one of those who just change lenses for every single scene, like just just do a bit of research on different lenses and different system different sensor size so um but nowadays it's still good to have a full hd camera a lot of people are crazy about 4k but 
not very many people are actually watching things in 4K. Sure, there are benefits of 4K such as cropping into your image or um, have a clean, cleaner full HD samples. So if you film in 4K, you downscale to full HD, you get a cleaner image and a sharper image as well. But on the other hand, a good, there's also a lot of uh, cameras out there which does good full HD, really, really sharp. And it's also on a lower price range. And that's another benefit of full HD is that um, like, it is still very, very sharp, but it's becoming cheaper. And like even a lot of manufacturers nowadays that still pro like produce full HD cameras are improving on their full HD. So full HD is actually not only just the resolution, but it's also like how clear um, each pixels are, if that makes sense. So if you look back at like when full HD was a big thing, like when it just came out, just hit the market. There were a lot of camcorders that also um, brag about having full HD, but their full HD looked pretty, pretty soft and like digitally over sharpened compared to like real full HD, which was delivered by higher end um, DSLRs at the time. And it's a bit like that nowadays where um, full HD is just also being improved. So. Um, for 300 euros, for example, you can get a really, really nice full HD camera that will get the job done as well. So I would recommend a camera that shoots at least full HD. Number seven is actually lenses. Lenses is actually really important. It's like the eye for the sensor of your camera. So it helps to tell the story. It helps you to actually film in certain places, like depending on which uh, lens you want to use. So um, you can have the lens that gives you a lot of light into the camera and you can actually film more shallow depth of the field, have a more blurry background, or that also means that you can also film in a lower light condition. And yeah, lenses is something to always have a look like really closely at. And also it will give you um, the different character and feeling of the uh, whole image that you want to have. So yes, it's always good to have like one all around lens, but it's better to have many lenses or quite a few or a few lenses to actually uh, give your story a different perspective, a different story, a different character to it. Because it's also in the same time kind of boring to always have like use one lens to like film everything. I'm not saying that you can't achieve a lot with it. You can, but like try to look for a different character, like adding different characteristics to your look in the film because it will also like help to keep the eyes on it. But don't overuse it. Um, because it can look more distracting and it can look more like you're trying to show off different characters or characteristics of your footage. I'm sorry, my English is not good, um, but I'm doing my best here. Number eight is microphones or microphone. Um, like, depending on what you do, you also want to have a look at the different kinds of microphones that are available and what kind of microphones do you need, whether it's a lavalier mic or a shotgun mic or whatever. Um, just look closely. I personally, as a shotgun mic, I use the uh, video mic micro from Rode. It's only 60 euros and I think the sound quality is great on top of this camera. Um, I'm filming it with, well, I'm recording the audio with it right now, but if I'm doing short film, I also use another shotgun mic. It's the NTG2 and then I plug it into my external recorder, which is the um, Zoom H4n. And I think it's it's just a cleaner audio from that recorder out of, well, straight out of the mic and the recorder, rather than out of the camera preamp. And the audio in total, like, at the end of the day, just sounds cleaner out of an external device, of course. And um, I also use sometimes the recorder itself just to capture the audio. And uh, for the lavalier mic, I also use it in short films but uh, only in the situations where I can't get the boom pole for the mic, like in certain rooms or in certain situations where the space doesn't allow, it's actually really convenient to have the wireless lavalier mic hidden in the, like underneath the uh, clothes from the actor or actress, and then just have it wirelessly transferred into the recorder or into the camera. And my trick with these microphones is that I usually put the decibels on the microphone a bit higher and lower the decibels 
in the camera and that will actually give me a cleaner audio. Yeah, that's just my little trick. But um, also like look for different mics, which one really suits you uh, um, best because you know, not everyone is doing the same projects. Everyone will need different characteristics of their audios and uh, yeah. And uh, following from microphones is actually recorders. So a lot of people are also using this Zoom H1 recorder. Actually, I have it as well and I used to use it um, in, in the very beginning like of my channel. Um, but uh, now I'm using the uh, Zoom H4. N. Yeah, Zoom H4n. And to be honest, Zoom H1 is still a perfectly fine recorder. I just need another recorder to actually have an XLR input. And actually, um, they both are really clean. Yes, with the extra money, I had like I can control more, and I also get a little bit cleaner audio out of the H4n. But the H1 is also a really nice recorder. But there are also other, other brands like Tascam, I think Sennheiser does, uh, ha, yeah, Sennheiser also makes recorders, but it's a bit pricey. But yeah, otherwise Zoom and Tascam and some other companies also makes great recorders. Number 10 on the list is reflectors. So reflector, I think it's just like in photography, you need some sort of fill light on the main character, like, or, or or on anything you're filming. And it does help with uh, lighting or reflecting certain light up rather than just having another light bulb turn on or whatever. I'm sorry if you're hearing any fan noise, it's from my lighting, it's um, cooling itself down right now. But my 11th point is headphone. So it's always good to have good and clear headphones to actually monitor your sound or listening to the project like the video after you film it or whatever because it's always good to have that um, perfect sound or as close to perfect as possible sound from the field and then do a bit of editing later rather than um, you know having an audio sound and then later try to fix it because that will be a harder job for yourself and it's just too much work it takes too much time and just like a bad image if um, you got like an overexposed image, it's hard to recover a lot of highlights back or if you have a way underexposed image, it's hard to recover everything in the shadows or in the dark area and then make it look clean. So audio is the same thing, you don't want to be like um, completely under recorded um, the audio that you have to boost it so high that you hear all the fuzziness and everything. So yeah, make sure to get good headphones and not really too bass heavy or not too heavy in any ways, just a good like neutral sounding headphones that helps you to accurately monitor your audio. Yeah. My 12th point is actually a mic stand and this is actually really important depending on what you do. Um, so if you're filming an interview or filming yourself like this and if you want to have an external recorder, you might as well just also get like a mic stand and then put the mic on there so that the mic is closer to um, the person who you're filming. Let's say if you're filming an interview you can have a mic stand close to the uh, um, to the talent and then just put a mic there with a mic stand and then you just record it so the audio is actually closer to the person and you actually hear cleaner and clearer audio from filming that person. So yeah, a mic stand is always important to have if you're doing that sort of thing. My 13th point is editing software. Now, um, there are a lot of really nice editing software out there. I personally use Final Cut Pro. A lot of people said it's not good, not professional. I think that if you use it correctly, it is good and professional. Sure, just like m many other softwares out there, it doesn't have every single features you need. Premiere Pro also doesn't have every single features you need, but um, what I like about Final Cut is that it's really fast, easy, like easy to use, and you know, like from my testing, um, if I do the same project on Premiere Pro and on Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro will actually export it faster, and then I still have time to 
review the whole video and then do some minor fixes and then export it again. And then during all the, those time, my Premiere Pro would still actually be exporting out of the uh, software. So I just like how quick Final Cut Pro is. But there are a lot of other free softwares. Um, for example, Hit Film Express, I think that's what it's called. That's another really, really nice editing software and it's free for both Mac and Windows, I believe. And you can do really nice color grading, really professional video editing on there. So yeah, these are all the 13 things I have on my list. Um, I know that there are probably some more and there are probably some that you guys don't really agree with me. I'm sorry, um, but not everyone films the exact same way and this is just my opinion on what I think it's uh, essential, like the 13 essential things that you need as a filmmaker. But yeah, it's good to be back on YouTube and thank you very much for watching. And I know I've been away for two months. Um, for those people who have subscribed to my channel for a while will probably know why. And I do thank all of you for the support. It like the past two months was uh, pretty bad. Like, um, for those who subscribe to my channel for a while knows that I actually have depression. So yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I went away for like two whole months. And I do thank those people who supported me and sent me really nice and kind messages uh, through Facebook, Instagram, even YouTube inbox and some left some comments on certain videos. I really thank you guys. I'm not saying that uh, my depression is over yet. It's not, it's certainly not a cold or fever thing where just like that it's over. Well, okay, fever, maybe two weeks. But um, I'm still recovering and this is my first video. That's why I'm also being a bit unnatural right now because I just got back to the Netherlands as well and um, I still need to sort a lot of things. My uni opens in a few days. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of things to arrange and do. So yeah, but I just wanted to actually um, put some content out for you guys rather than let some of you guys think like where is David where has it gone to but yeah I'm back on YouTube thank you very much for all the support and for watching this video this video is a little bit um, weird feeling wise for me because I have to get used to the camera again um, because during those two months I also stopped vlogging but yeah I'm back Thank you for very much for watching and have fun shooting. Bye.